वेलकम टू द चैनल गाइवी एंड सलकाई टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट कार्बोनिक एनहाइड्रेस इनहिबिटर कार्बोनिक एनहाइड्रेस इज एन एंजाइम व्हिच कैटालाइजेस द रिवर्सिबल रिएक्शन इन व्हिच वाटर कंबाइंस विद सीओ2 टू फॉर्म H2CO3 एंड आल्सो डिसोसिएशन ऑफ H2CO3 इनटू वाटर एंड CO2 इनहिबिशन ऑफ दिस एंजाइम बाय कार्बोनिक एनहाइड्रेस इनहिबिटर विल लीड टू डायुरेटिक एक्शन एज वी शैल सी सब्सिक्वेंटली डायुरेटिक्स आर ड्रग्स दैट कॉज अ नेट लॉस ऑफ सोडियम एंड वाटर इन द यूरिन actually there is loss of sodium and water just follows it excretion of sodium in the urine is known as natriuresis so diuretics are also called natriuretics i shall be denoting carbonic anhydrase inhibitor as cai for simplicity site of action of cai is proximal convoluted tubule of nephron let us now understand the normal reabsorption of sodium that takes place at the pct because inhibition of this reabsorption will lead to increased excretion of sodium in the urine and consequent diuretic action this is the lumen and this is the interstitial space any hco3 sodium bicarbonate comes in the tubular lumen by glomerular filtration it dissociates into sodium and hco3 minus sodium is transported inside the pct cell by sodium hydrogen antipotal and along with it hydrogen is transported into the lumen hydrogen combines with hco3 minus to form h2co3 h2co3 breaks into water and co2 in the presence of carbonic anhydrase type 4 it is also known as dehydration of h2co3 because water is formed h2o and co2 is freely diffusible into the pct cell where they combine in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme type 2 to form h2co3 it is also known as hydration of co2 because there is addition of water to co2 h2co3 dissociates into h plus and hco3 minus h plus is utilized at the sodium hydrogen antipotal for entry of sodium into the pct cell sodium and hco3 minus present inside the pct cell is transported into the interstitial fluid by sodium h co3 minus symporter from here they shall reach blood now carbonic anhydrase are non competitive but reversible inhibitors of carbonic anhydrase enzyme generally all non competitive inhibitors are irreversible but here it is important to note that it is a reversible phenomenon examples of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors include acetazolamide brenzolamide and darzolamide acetazolamide is mainly used orally but brenzolamide and darzolamide are used topically as eye drops now the mechanism of action of cai their action at proximal convoluted tubule is mainly responsible for diuretic action they inhibit carbonic anhydrase type 2 and 4 which lead to decreased availability of h plus to facilitate the entry of sodium and also regeneration of it's co3 minus inside the pct cell so there is ultimately decreased absorption of sodium and bicarbonate the former produces diuretics and latter leads to alkalinization of urine so carbonic anhydrase inhibition action produces alkaline diuresis it is also important to note that carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are mild diuretic because sodium that is rejected in the pct is absorbed at further sodium absorbing sites in the nephron like thick ascending limb of loop of henle distal tubule and collecting duct and one is action of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor at distal tubule and collecting duct the complete mechanism of heavy absorption of sodium and secretion of potassium and h plus at the distal tubule and collecting duct is discussed in another lecture of potassium sparing diuretic here we shall only try to understand some important concepts in normal condition if we suppose 100 na plus comes in the dt and cd region of which 40 na plus is reabsorbed and 60 na plus is secreted into the lumen to maintain the charges 20k plus and 20h plus are secreted into the lumen now the second condition in which a diuretic is being used 
ether loop diuretic or thiazide they decrease sodium reabsorption proximal to distal tubule and collecting duct and hence increased sodium now comes at the distal tubule and collecting duct suppose in place of 100 sodium now 200 sodium comes more sodium means more reabsorption at dt and cd now 80 na plus is reabsorbed in place of 40 and 120 na plus is secreted into the urine we can thus see that sodium excretion has been increased from 60 to 120 so we can say that diuretic action has been achieved but it is important to note that now 40k plus and 40h plus is secreted thus increased potassium loss leads to hypokalemia now let us understand the case of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor it is also a diuretic so more sodium will now come at distal tubule and collecting duct region and similarly out of 200 80 na plus is reabsorbed and 120 na plus is secreted into the lumen here it is important to note that H plus cannot be generated in the principal cells which are the cells present at DT and CD because source of H plus is carbonic anhydrase enzyme and it is already inhibited. So only AT K plus is secreted to maintain the charge and no H plus is secreted. H plus is spared or preserved. So we can see that there is marked potassium loss producing marked hypokalemia. So we, we can note H plus cannot be produced in the principal cells of DT and CD. So Na plus exchange takes place only with K plus which is lost in excess. Also we have taken such amount of diuretic, loop diuretic, thiazide and CAI that all will produce similar nitrouresis that is similar sodium loss as we have seen 120 sodium, 120 sodium loss. And we notice for the same degree of nitrouresis compared to other diuretic carbonic anhydrase inhibitors cause the most marked caliuresis that is potassium loss and hence most marked hypokalemia also we have seen there is increased bicarbonate loss in the urine and increased h plus retention these two lead to alkalinization of urine and development of metabolic acidosis also we now understand that carbonic anhydrase inhibitors have self-limiting action because continued use of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor leads to loss of bicarbonate in the urine so the bicarbonate stores in the body are depleted now less bicarbonate will come in the urine this bicarbonate was responsible for sodium reabsorption so now there will be less sodium reabsorption and less sodium reabsorption means less diuretic action so diuretic action decreases with continued use. Uses of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. It is usually not used as diuretic because it has a self-limiting action, produces marked hypokalemia and produces metabolic acidosis. It is used as glaucoma because it decreases aqueous humor formation and secretion mainly benzolamide and diazolamide are used as topical eye drops it is used to alkalinize urine this promotes excretion of acidic drugs and mainly used in acidic drug poisoning it is used in epilepsy mainly absence scissors it is also used in mountain sickness in fact it is the drug of choice for mountain sickness what happens in mountain sickness Suppose a person goes at high altitude, there is less partial pressure of oxygen and hyperventilation occurs in order to increase intake of O2. But in this process, there is increased CO2 washout. So there is decreased carbonic acid H2CO3 in blood and we have respiratory alkalosis. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor increases bicarbonate loss in the urine and treat respiratory alkalosis we can also use it in periodic paralysis now the adverse effects we have already seen it produces metabolic acidosis and marked hypokalemia it also produces paresthesias 
it can lead to increased tendency of kidney stone formation because calcium tend to precipitate in the alkaline medium and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are well known for increasing the alkalinity of the urine it causes hypersensitivity reactions it is contraindicated in liver failure because it precipitates hepatic coma by decreasing urinary elimination of ammonia due to alkalinization of urine we shall understand this in detail normally urea is produced from ammonia in the liver which is then excreted by the kidney but in case of liver failure ammonia cannot be converted into the urea in the liver so kidney takes the responsibility of excreting ammonia ammonia comes into the tubular lumen and gets trapped there in the form of nh4 plus and is further excreted this formation of nh4 plus requires h plus that is slight acidic nature of urine but carbonic anhydrase inhibitors increase the alkalinization of urine decreases h plus source so there is less formation of nh4 plus and less excretion of ammonia so ammonia level rises in the blood and produces hepatic coma cai are also contraindicated in copd patients because they produces acidosis we know that this and acidosis leads to hyperventilation to increase co2 loss in order to compensate acidosis but we know they cannot hyperventilate copd patients they cannot hyperventilate and hence acidosis is marked in them this is all for today hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos